were doing a small tour of Asia. We'd arrived in Hong Kong and our uh, gig in Tokyo was cancelled. And we were going, after Tokyo, we were going to Jakarta, so it seemed like madness to fly back to London. So we just booked a studio and got on with it. It started typically with uh, getting my iPad out and going, hey guys, <laughs> here's an idea. And then, uh, you know, everyone would either respond to that or, um, or we'd just leave it and move on to another one. You just sort of take it wherever it goes. Each song was about 30 minutes long, just because you just play it out and see where it goes. And then when you feel you've done enough, you go on to the next one. And, and that's what we did in Hong Kong. We didn't kind of review anything, really. That, that happened a lot later. So crawled out the harbour with recession behind me. And what happened after that was, you know, we all just got into our life rhythm, you know, and we, off we went and carried on. Damon was touring and... So the, it was getting further and further away, the time, that time in Hong Kong, and I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted to have a look at these tapes, um, see if there was anything there, because it felt good during the recording. You know, I think we really went somewhere and all that one in the jam sessions and all of that. My idea was to go through everything that we'd recorded with a producer, Stephen Street. I thought Stephen Street would be a good man for the job, someone we could be honest with, trust, etc., etc. So I put it to Damon and he went, yep, yeah, go ahead. And so for the four weeks after that, we just worked on editing and shaping this stuff, seeing what was there, seeing what we could cut out, throw away, seeing what was keepable and all that and usable and got it to a sort of uh, presentable state for Damon, really, to see if he would dig it and want to commit to doing any vocals, etc. But all the stuff we trimmed out was saved for the next one. <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> it was kind of obvious from the, from the sessions where, where that was happening, where there was a creative spark, and, and there was, it was obvious when at other times when we were just like getting a bit bored. Because it's a jam session, you play it once. So it's not like you play it over yeah. and over again, it sticks in your memory. So listening to it back was uh, amazing because it was, uh, you know, oh yeah, I, I remember doing that. And um, oh, I remember that lovely chord sequence and this and that. And um, it, was a, it was a really nice thing to rediscover this stuff we'd done, like a little message in a bottle. And Alex and I went in, I suppose about a week, certainly about a week in my case, patched up some stuff, added some extra things. And that was amazing, actually, to hear how far it had come since the Hong Kong sessions. It was transformed. It was really quite moving, actually. And it's been so long, I hadn't really remembered what, you know, the detail of what we'd done. So to kind of go in and hear it sounding so finished and so beautiful, you know, it was really nice. Me dreaming of love, love so far away. I've got some uh, Hong Kong uh, cartoonists to make a sort of fantasy story of the Magic Whip which will be available soon and they've kind of, they've written that story about it's sort of us coming in a kind of spaceship into the protest with our Magic Whip. Yep. You know, really, 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 there's a lot of that on the record. The sort of, you know, the Magic Whip in itself is a, is a misleading title. It, it alludes to a kind of a, nice, a really great tasting ice cream but actually sort of veers towards the idea of the whip and state control. And I think it's going to, in our live shows, that will be amplified and exaggerated and, you know, hopefully we'll have a whole world on stage that accompany the music. There's a lot of people out there hearing, hearing us play for the first time, hearing these songs for the first time. So, uh, you know, it's really quite heartening to look out at the crowd and see a lot of young faces as well as, I was about to say some old faces, but uh, older faces. No, I don't like seeing old faces. <laughs> I like the sticks when they're waving their sticks at the back. The oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> on, stage, on stage and in the audience. <laughs> we have a special few blokes that yeah, they shovel the old people. In fact, that's the what back. we spend most of our money on now, isn't it? Oxygen. <laughs>
Well, right now we're doing some much smaller shows. I mean, we're really just playing the new material, maybe throwing in one or two from the old, uh, from the old albums. The remarkable that, thing is really how little's changed, I think. 